Hi, this is Jody from mcpactions.com. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to use the Newborn Necessities set for Photoshop. Newborn Necessities may be used on subjects of all ages, but it was designed especially for editing babies and newborns. We organize the action set in sections based on our recommended workflow. While we feel the structure of the set will yield you the most professional results, you may edit in your preferred order and you do not need to use an action from every section. Let's go ahead and take a look at the action set. Once you load it into Photoshop using the installing actions video, then you will see the action set in your actions palette and you will click on the little arrow to expand. Once you've expanded the action set, you will see a copyright notice and then the instructions. You will want to click on play to read these first. Then you will go ahead and see the other sections for the set. The set starts out with fixing exposure and there's an action to increase and decrease exposure. The next section is for the newborn workflow. We highly recommend you start with one of these. If you are unsure which to start with, check your instruction document that came with your action set and it'll tell you a little bit about each of them. Alternatively, you can play the diaper bag action and allow you to mix and match. It's my personal favorite. Blankets of haze, you can do the exact same thing. You can run any individual haze action or you can run the entire blankets of haze mix and match. Again, I prefer run the mix and matches and I can choose that way very quickly which one I like. The next section is workflow helpers. There's a brightener dark and midtones. There's also one for painting on light or dark in areas that you want. There's a quiet the highlights which will actually help you recover uh, areas that are almost blown out in your photo. There is also something to brighten up shadows. Crying for contrast is one of my favorite actions. It just adds the right bit of punch to your photo. And Cake Smash ColourPop, if you would like to paint on ColourPop selectively to your photo. The next section is at your fingertips. These are things that are very easy to do in Photoshop, but they're also nice to have at your fingertips, such as making a snapshot for the history panel, pacify the layers to flatten, and baby wipes, which will take all your edits away and bring you back to the beginning if you've done something you're not happy with. The next section is skin color correction. This is one of the key areas for editing newborns and babies. Oftentimes their skin color and tone will be off and this will help you fix it. There are is hush the reds, hush the jaundice and hush the grays, which will allow you to decrease those areas, the reds, uh, the yellows for jaundice and hush the grays actually adds warmth, which gets rid of the gray tones. The paint on baby fixes are more specific. The ones that say hush do all over your photo. The ones that say paint on, you're just gonna paint on the fix directly on the area in which you want. The next part is slide to hush, and that will run all three hush actions at once. So it's a mix and match. So if it's a little bit needing to get rid of yellows and reds, this is the perfect action. Paint on formula gives you even more control for your color correction. In this action, it's going to give you plus and minuses for different color tones and allow you to actually paint that on and change the opacity to taste. Next, in my dreams, if you ever have purple or red baby feet or horrible splotchy coloring, this will help you fix that spot color problems. It is not to be used all over your newborn or infant, but just in select areas with color problems. The next section is called No More Tears Retouching. This has actions to brighten the skin, smooth and give a matte look to the skin, or actually help give a creamy look to the skin and even out tones and such. Um, it also has a great action for eyes called Sharp Eyelashes for baby's eyes that are closed. And then there's Eyes Wide Open, which will help enhance eyes when you have baby eyes that are open for either newborns, infants, or toddlers. Blushing, if you ever get a washed out tone after using the actions and you wanna add just a little pink to the lips or cheeks, this is the right action. The next section and last section is beyond the crib. And this has actions for everything that isn't related to the baby directly. So for example, we've got a white blanky fix, which will turn a blanket white if it's got like an off white or grayish tone and you wanna just kinda of take out any color casts off the blanket. We've got vignettes, 
and we have a number of different ones so it can kind of match the tones of your picture. My personal favorite is the natural vignette. For black and whites, I like to use the black and white vignette, but the rosy and cool vignette as well as frosted also have some great places in your workflow. Next, it's a blur and baby focused. will help you get that blur and shallow depth of field looks. The studio white and black backdrops. If you're shooting against a white or black backdrop that doesn't quite turn white or black, those actions will assist you. And then we've got some sharpening actions at the end of the set. So that's the overview. Now we're gonna go ahead and edit a few photos here. I've got four total photos. The first one we're gonna just experiment on. I'm not gonna do a complete edit, but I just wanna show you how the actions run. So for the newborn workflow actions, let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you the mix and match of diaper bag. And when you play it, it'll just take a second or two to run and it'll give you some instructions that are built in as well. You're gonna actually select what you would like. So you'll click on a layer, and these are at a slightly reduced opacity versus the ones that run solo, so that way you're able to mix and match them without having to do too much tweaking. So for example, I just turned sugar and spice on and twinkle, twinkle. Now, there's also the option for black and white, so let me show you how that would work. You would turn on one of these three black and whites, either bedtime, nap time, or playtime, and you need to turn on the black and white base. The black and white base, you're not going to change the opacity on. These other three, bedtime, nap time, and playtime, you can change the opacity to taste. So there's playtime, there's nap time, and my personal favorite, bedtime. With blankets of haze, you can add any type of haze and toning to your image. If we go ahead and use the blankets of haze action, which runs all of them, you can see they stack nicely. Again, nothing would be turned on by default, whereas if you want to run an individual, it will already be turned at a default opacity. So on a black and white, it's just going to tone your image slightly. So you can see peaches and cream here. We're going to move on now, and let's go ahead and edit the twins here. So let's go ahead and pick a black and white. As I told you, my favorite one for most photos is bedtime. Love it. So we're gonna run bedtime, and again, the default opacity here is 52%, but anytime you want, you can come in and click on that little arrow and change the opacity of the strength of the bedtime black and white layer or any of the other black and white layers. You don't wanna change the bedtime base. It says right in there, do not adjust, very important. Let's go ahead now and smooth out their skin just a little bit. It's pretty nice already, but let's go ahead and run and click on baby lotion. And it's gonna give you a message letting you know that you would benefit most by doing this after doing your workflow, but that if you choose to do it before, you will need to flatten before you run the workflow actions so layers don't get all jumbled. Okay, so we've got baby lotion and all you're going to do is use a paintbrush. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and paint just on the forehead, a little bit under the eyes. When you paint on smoothness. You want to avoid typically the lips and the eye areas and usually the hairline as well. Also, you're best off avoiding any creases. Your brush is going to automatically be the correct color that's programmed in. It's just the opacity of the brush that if you desire changing, you'll want to change up at the top here. For this one right now, I'm just using 100% though. But for any that call for lower percent, that's where you'll change it. Okay, and we're done with that. Let's go ahead now and enhance their eyelashes just a bit by using sharp eyelashes. You can also paint this on the lips and even on the nostrils to bring the de little definition out in those. So we're gonna just come in here and you'll see right away how those just pop. And here I'm gonna show you on the nostril area and on the lips. If it's too strong, sometimes the default opacity will be a little bit strong, you can lower the opacity to taste. Lastly, let's go ahead and use the black and white vignette. So this edit is done. We're now going to move on to Red Baby. This baby's skin is quite red, and as such, we wanna tone that down a bit and just enhance the picture. Let's go ahead and start out by using the diaper bag mix and match. And I'm gonna come in here and start out. I love using Sugar and Spice or Pick Me Up one of those two, to give the photo pop. Then also I wanna add a little bit of softness, so let's go ahead with something like Twinkle Twinkle. I'm gonna adjust the opacities a bit here. For Twinkle Twinkle, I'm gonna go up a little bit, so it adds a little bit more yellow tones and haze. And then for Sugar and Spice, I want a little bit more contrast, so I'm gonna go up 
and just scroll up something about there in the 70s looks good. And as you can see, part of the reason the workflow is designed this way is it actually will reduce the color problems oftentimes without even using the color actions. We are going to get to those in a minute, the color correction actions, but as you can see, it's already a lot better. The red is already reduced in the skin. Now we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of contrast by using Crying for Contrast. So I click play. It's a little bit strong, so I'm going to bring the opacity down just a tad. Next, I'm going to go to the color correction actions. And for this, I just want to paint a little bit on the skin. I don't want to lose red in the blanket or in the little wrap that the baby's got around. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the paint on action. And it will tell you the recommended opacity is 20 to 35% for the brush. If you use a 100% brush, it may be too strong. So I'm going to go and bring that down. And I'm going to paint on the baby's skin and on the hair also. You can see the hair had quite a bit of red in it. So I'm going to come in here and paint on the hands using a soft edged airbrush. If I paint too much, I can always switch back to black and redo it, but actually that looks really good. So I'm going to go with that. And from there, I'm going to just scroll down here and I'm going to use sharp eyelashes. I use the sharp eyelash action just to bring out those eyelashes. For this action, I like to use a brush at 100% most of the time and just adjust the layer opacity if it's too strong. I'm going to also paint on those lips to bring out a little of the shine. Lastly, we're going to run baby focused. This action does require flattening, so make sure you're done with everything else on your photo before you use it. And it will warn you of that. Once you're ready, you'll click continue. And it's going to go ahead and flatten your image. And then you're going to be able to actually selectively blur your photo. So you'll see the directions pop up here and say, select the gradient tool from your toolbar. In the corresponding top toolbar, choose the radial gradient. You actually have another choice also. I'm going to show you that one as well. Then it's going to tell you a little bit more information, but I'm going to actually be showing you here. So what we do is choose the gradient tool, which is this tool right here. It goes from black to white in your left toolbar. If you don't see it, it could be hidden under the paint bucket. So look for the paint bucket and then right click and go to the gradient tool. Up in your top toolbar, the main one you're going to want to use is the second one over. It's like a white blur and it's got black on the outside. The alternative one that you might want to use is the reflected gradient. It can work well also for a baby that's linear like this. But I'm going to go ahead and show you with this one, the second one over the radial. So I go on the eye area and I drag outward. The further out you drag, the less blur there will be. The shorter in, the more blur. You can always do this multiple times until you get the right blur, but actually that looks pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and turn it on and off. If the blur overspills onto, say, the hands and you want those sharp, all you're going to do, your brush is already going to be black, you're going to take a black brush, soft edge brush, and just come in here and quickly paint on the hands or any other areas where you want to make sure they are fully sharp. If you wanted to transition it a little bit more, you could always paint with a lower opacity brush on any areas that are blurry to blend those in. And that's how Baby Focused works. Last picture. For this one, we're going to go ahead and use uh, Pick Me Up because I want to really bring out the colors in this photo and it's a little bit stronger than Sugar and Spice. So I'm going to run Pick Me Up. Okay, I ran Pick Me Up and you'll see it says I can open to adjust if I want to adjust any of the layers inside, which typically I rarely do, but you do have that option. And then I can also adjust the opacity. I'm going to bring this up quite a bit because I really want this photo to have some nice color tones and contrast. Now, I'm going to want to add a little bit more purple to this photo. So rather than run the mix and match, I already know that it would be nice to add just some purple tones. So I'm going to run Lavender Lovey, and it's just going to give it a light purple haze. Again, I can adjust the opacity up or down with that. Next, I'm going to go ahead and use the Paint On formula under the Skin Tone Correction. And you'll see it's got these layers built here. We don't need to use all of them. We just need to use the ones that would help us correct the photo. The skin tone's already pretty good, but I just want to add a little bit of yellow, and I want to add a little bit of red. So I'm going to select my brush tool and I'm just going to very lightly paint on 
with a low opacity brush. And then I'm gonna to go to the plus red and do the same thing. Just will give that skin tone a little bit of warmth. I'm gonna come in here and give the skin a little bit creamier of a look using dusting a baby powder, which is going to lighten it up quite significantly and make it much more smooth and creamy. And then I'm going to come in and even more cream by using baby lotion, which I did show you earlier. And that one you're just gonna paint on. And I'm actually only gonna paint it on in a few of the areas where the skin's a little bit rough. I'm gonna use a brush at 100% to paint this on. And that's it. Uh, if I wanted to bring out the eyelashes, I could come in here, paint on the sharp eyelashes, which again, you've seen done before. Just wanna go on that crease and maybe on the lips a little to bring out some of the shine. And that's all. As you can see, it's a complete edit. And I haven't showed you any of the before and after, so I'll go ahead quickly and do that. For this photo right here, that was our before. And that's the after. For this photo right here, there's our before. And there's our after. And on the twin babies, there's our before, and there's our after. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Jody from mcpactions.com, helping you edit your newborn photos.